Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, tonight I am going to make up some biscuits for my dogs. Uh, dog treats, dog biscuits. Uh, they are based with peanut butter and cheese. A couple more things to get them a bit more excited. Um, come along with me and I will show you the making of them. Yeah, just a word of warning, I generally don't follow recipes too well. Uh, this is one that's come out of my head. Um, so, yeah, it may get tweaked and played with as, as we go along, but let's have a look and see what happens tonight. All right, we're gonna start with some wholemeal flour. This is a self-raising wholemeal flour. start with four cups of the flour. Okay, four cups of flour. Simple as that. Next up, we're going to put in a cup of oats. It just helps them with a healthy digestion. You can also use a wheat bran, oat bran. Um, you don't have to put oats in. Something I just like to put in. You know, helps keep the boys healthy. Alright, the last of our dry ingredients. A good handful of cheese. And there's not much left in the bag, so I may as well have the rest of it. As I said, I ain't good with recipes. But the boys enjoy my cooking. Alright, moving on to the wet ingredients. We've got some olive oil. Just helps with a nice healthy coat shine. And that's just a couple of tablespoons. I will write the recipe proper down underneath so that everyone can actually follow it. All right. Next word ingredient is some it be hard to see, but you can see it when I pour. Some beef stock. Tend to find that makes it a wee bit more appetizing for them than just using plain water. You know, if you're gonna give them a treat, you may as well give them a treat that they're gonna love. Okay, so a cup and a half of that. Next up, some peanut butter. Smooth or crunchy. And they don't really care. They do love peanut butter though. Uh, if your dog is one of those ones with a peanut allergy, well of course, leave it out. This jug actually holds two cups. And I'm gonna use half a cup of the peanut butter. So with our cup and a half of stock, if I add in enough peanut butter to bring it up to the two cup level. And we know we've got half a cup of peanut butter. And we are there. Alrighty. Now the next step with this is I'm going to 
microwave the stock and the peanut butter just to warm it up. When I warm it up, it just means that the dough is a little bit softer and easier to work. So I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to go bang it in the microwave. Okay, back again. Uh, we're going to stir this up. Peanut butter, while it's heated up with that stock, is going to mix up easy. But while I'm doing that, I'm just going to drop the mixer down and just on low. Okay, that's the dry ingredients pre-mixed and listening to that tells me that I'm going to have to play some music over the mixing part. Butter all dissolved into the stock. And just pull that in without getting it all over the bench. Nice of those peanutty bits out. Move that away and tidy the bench. All right, mixing time, and I will play some music for you over the top of this. I'm just going to put it on a low setting. I just want to bring this dough together. Here we are, all back. The dough's come together. And as I said, with the hot water, it makes it a very, very soft dough, which makes it easy to work. Okay. Let's get this mixer out of the way. So we've got some spice. Okay, mix this out of the way. Let's work this dough. So I just want to pick up those last dry bits that are sitting in the bowl there. bring it all together.
does it though. You just roll it out. And we're looking for about five to six mil, which is about a quarter of an inch thickness. Okay, cutting them out. You can use what an Aussie would call a scone cutter. An American would probably call this a biscuit cutter. You can use a glass. Like so. Or you can get very fancy and like I have Dog bone cutters. Of course the dogs love their bones. So we will just get it through. Cut, wiggle. As with any dough, you want to sort of try and keep your cuts as tight together so there's less left over and it means it's not getting rolled as many times. Okay, go through, pop them out. They will go onto a baking sheet, which I will set up in a moment. Bring those leftovers together. Bring the rest of the dough that was left. And you'll notice once it starts cooling down, it does get a wee bit harder to work. All right, well, I'll go through and I'll make the rest of these and I'll be back with you shortly. All right, ready to go. Yeah, a couple of paper line baking sheets and it's just a matter of whacking them on there. Give them a little bit of space between 
Hey, that have been messed up a touch. Just press them down. Other oh, dogs generally don't too, mind too much about the shape, but hey, it's worth doing. It's worth doing well. These will go in a very low temperature oven, um, 170 Celsius, um, which is about 340 Fahrenheit. As much as cooking them, I want to dry them a bit, just so they'll keep a little bit longer. And obviously with, with all the oils and cheese and that sort of stuff in it, they're not going to keep forever. But the drier I can get them, the longer they're going to hold for. Let's try and keep them all separated. that lot and we've got a couple of more over here so I'm gonna have three trays to run through the oven um, when I'm halfway through as I said I'm looking to dry not to not to cook them so I'm I'm looking for a browning but a very slow browning and drying out when I get to halfway I'll pull them out I'll flip them over and I'll show you at that stage and then we'll pop them back in. As I said, it's drying, not cooking. So it's going by eye, not so much by time. All right, I oh, will talk to you once they come back out. All right, folks, it's been about, oh, about 40 minutes since they went in the oven. This is the top shelf tray. You see they picked up a little bit of color on top. Still sort of soft on the bottom. So we flip them all over. And back in they go for a little bit longer. Uh, obviously the bottom shelf tray, tray is taking a bit more time than the top shelf tray. Um, but yeah, in for a bit longer, get some more color on them dry them out a bit more. Okay, see you in a bit. Alright folks, it's another 15 minutes and we are fairly firm and dry now. They will firm up a wee bit more after they've cooled off, so I'm just going to put them on a wire rack so they can do that. So I'm going to put these other ones in and just keep going through. I will be back with you at the end. All right, folks, there we are, all done. And as I said, once they cool off, they firm up nicely. And of course, nothing's complete without testing it. So we may as well go for a taste test. Yeah, no, nah, not today. <laughs> Sit. Sit. That's it. And it looks like it's a success. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Um, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, so you get notified of the next videos I have. And again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Thank you.